So so thanks Raj coming on camera. So why are we here and what are we doing? Uh, just before that, maybe a little bit about who am I and uh, what I have been up to. Uh, I call myself an authentic leadership coach, facilitator and a podcaster. Uh, and also happen to be the founder director of a trans management center. Uh, this has been my uh, entrepreneurial venture for the last 14 years, uh, carrying around 25 years of experience. The only part of profession that I know is learning and development. I am a very, very passionate facilitator. That's how I started my career training, uh, taking care of the training and development department to now the side where I am trying to bring about the change in a facilitator that generally businesses require. Now, this is a short uh, introduction. Of course, I can go on and on. You know, facilitators love to speak. But today we are here on a very uh, focused agenda. And uh, the reason why we are here is we are launching our first uh, program that is a certified international uh, facilitator training program and uh, it's a very proud feeling because it's been one of my dreams and of course Sanjeev and Gauri will share their dreams on this uh, live path where always the struggle has been how as facilitators how as trainers we can give the best to the business and uh, we will talk about the program a little later but today we are, we are to understand the business a little more and take it ahead. So welcome again and thank you for supporting us on a Sunday afternoon and it's a very good day. It's Onam. Uh, so happy Onam to each one of us and may God be with us uh, for this successful journey. So I will hand over to my co-host right now, Sanjeev, and maybe a little bit of introduction from Gauri and then we'll go ahead with the program. Yeah, Sanjeev, take it ahead. Thank you so much, Mamita. So I too... Um completely enjoy the passion of being here, enjoy the passion of being a facilitator. Um, been around for 20 years in the industry and uh, moved various, various organizations and in my entrepreneurial journey for the last seven years. Um, when uh, we have been talking, I and Momita spoke about this, I think at least uh, three or four years back. And since then, we have been trying to conceive it, trying to build it, trying to um, sometimes take a pause, sometimes take a high, sometimes take a low with this uh, intervention or this uh, this whole concept. And uh, when we three, all of us uh, came together and discussed about this program, um, my personal vision for this program is that whatever I have learned in my journey, I would like to co-create a space to share. Uh, sometimes uh, when I started my career, today you have so many options of getting into this field of L&D. However, um, those, those are restrictive options. Those are options which are maybe not very structured. Those are options which are maybe very highly priced. And we have so many other reasons of why we don't go to those options. However, uh, the idea of us creating this is to create a platform where we can learn from each other, create a platform where we can um, look at the nuances of what happens when you are there. And that's why this program is not only a training program, but it has many, many uh, different facets. And I'm going to keep those surprises to, uh, for, uh, to a later part of the uh, session. However, uh, this is going to really change the way uh, we dream to re that it changes the way training and development of facilitation is looked at. Um, we have got many, many people who are going to join us in this session going forward. And that's that's really exciting for us. A lot of positive blessings, positive um, uh, ideas we have received from the for when we announced this program. So I'm super excited to launch the first batch of the, the international certification program. And this webinar, what we are going to do today is what I'll talk after Gauri um, uh, shares a little bit about herself. And I'm a warm welcome to all of you. Sunny has also joined us. Hi, Sunny. Good afternoon. So uh, we are going to be a, a wonderful conversation in this next 45 minutes to an hour. Yeah. Yes, over to you, Gauri. Thank you so much. And a warm welcome to all of you there. Uh, it's it's a great support uh, for us. It means a lot that you guys have joined in. Um, so I think uh, Momida and Sanjeev have already, uh, you know, explained to you how the journey started and how we got on to this. Um, so I also have been a part of training and facilitation. Of course, I started off as a language professional. 
And uh, gradually, as the natural progression goes, I have also got into the journey of behavioral and uh, leadership development uh, facilitator. I've been in the field for more than 20 years now. And the intent was, I think, more or less what both have shared is to, you know, give something that we have got along the journey. Uh, sometimes I feel that our learning curve was pretty steep initially. So the intent was always that why not make it a little easier for, you know, people, the new uh, joiners, the aspirants. And with that intent, uh, you know, this, this whole idea came into being for me. Um, uh, definitely, you know, uh, it's it's going to be exciting because a lot of different trends from the market and uh, different um, sort of ideas, the stalwarts the, who would be joining in, everything is going to be put together. So it's going to be a, a mix, a, a fantastic mix of, uh, you know, learnings and ideas. And I'm looking forward to that. So I'm hoping that you all also benefit a lot from it, uh, make the most of it and uh, wishing you all uh, all the best and wishing us also all the very best. Yeah, so this is what it is. Thank you so much. Thank you, Gauri. Thank you so much. Okay, so let me uh, directly jump into the session. And uh, as we talk about every session, it has to go with an agenda. And why are we here today? What is this whole webinar all about? So I'm going to share my screen. Um, the title, which I'm sure excited to all of you, and that's why you are here, is From Problems to Progress, Crafting Effective Learning Paths. So in our own roles, either this side of the table or the other side of the table, uh, we all experience interactions with l &D professionals. And uh, they ask us questions or they we answer the questions to them on how do I convert a problem to a progress? How do I convert a problem into a learning path? Now, this webinar revolves around this skill of a facilitator to be able to create those learning paths. And that's that's a demonstration of, of a very important skill which a facilitator or a trainer needs to have. Yeah. So... Uh, we need to surely want to know you all, okay? So what we would like you to do is I'm going to share on the next slide some images, okay? And these images, I would like you to think about these two questions. How do you perceive these images? What do these images mean to you? These are two questions, which of course I'll uh, keep on uh, shuffling the or rather going here and there on the slides. But these are two questions I would like you to keep in mind. How do I perceive these images? What do these images mean to you? And share a little brief about your background in terms of your role, your experience, anything relevant which you would like us to know. Pick up one image from, there are six images on the next slide. Pick up one image out of that and share how you relate to them to any training program which you have experienced, you have designed, you have participated, or you can uh, you have designed a session, you have designed a meeting, or any any kind of thing. And of course, elaborate a little bit of what, how you can connect to that to that image. Uh, since we are a small group, so you can go beyond two minutes as well. Maybe three minutes per person is a good time for you to share that. Um, so I'm going to go to the next slide uh, on looking at the images. So take your time, you can think about it. Once you're ready, you can raise your hand and then you. I, we would like you to share about the questions which I have put on the previous slide. I'll just for the benefit of all of us, I'll go back to the instruction slide. Share brief about yourself, pick up one image and share how you relate them to any training workshop 
with an explanation or a short elaboration. So Abhijit, Raj, Sakar, Sunny. So the forum is open for you. Whoever would like to pick up, you can go ahead. Yeah. Hey, hi, Sanjeev Sakar here. Hi. So, uh, okay, I I see these images. So uh, the the third one uh, on the first row, I see a mirror and a I guess an individual staring at the mirror. Uh, what I how I can relate it to one of the training sessions that I did is I used this uh, example, you know, as someone like uh, asking or perhaps telling the audience to figure out like if there is a mirror and you are looking at staring at the mirror, what do you see? Of course, you see your own self. So the whole exercise was about, you know, uh, windows and mirrors, I, windows and mirrors. I don't see a window here, but how I can relate it to that thing is that. Uh, and then the whole uh, exercise was based out on that if you see yourself when it is time to take accountability, take responsibility for, let's say, a failure of a project or if things are a little derailed, right? So then it's the time for a leader to look up, uh, look into the mirror and take responsibility, you know, raise his hands, show up and say, hey, I am responsible and don't blame it on others, maybe other people's situation or whatever are the other kind, you know, industry trends, which usually people attribute <clears throat> their failure to, right? And if it is uh, then, and at the time of the success, if, if their project team or organization, their department is doing very well, whatever they have scheduled for themselves is now, uh, have has reached the kind of glory that they expected and anticipated that project to reach, then at that time, they look uh, out of the window and usually, what do you see out of the window? You don't see yourself. You see other people. You see other things, right? So that's the time when you attribute that credit to your team or to any other external, uh, you know, factor, but not take the credit for your own self. So I can, I, I, the moment I saw this uh, mirror and an individual standing, I could relate it to that. But I see here it is a different man getting reflected in the mirror. So <laughs> I'm not sure <laughs> what is in, uh, you know, what you guys are. Uh, but this is uh, this is what uh, where I kind of related it. With, wonderful, know. wonderful. So thank you so much, Sakar, because um, uh, yes, uh, the image can have a different perspective for different people. And this is what is your story. We would like to hear, we wanted to hear your story. So this is your absolute truth for you, for whatever you have seen. So uh, the, that, that, that's how facilitation works. Yeah. Sakar, I would like you to a little bit talk about yourself as well. Um, what do you do? What is your role, your experience? A little bit about that. Sure, Sanjeev. So uh, I'm based out of Pune. I come from, uh, basically, I am a computer science engineer. I come from an IT background. I worked in IT for 15 years, close to 15 years. Okay. And then uh, uh, around 2019, I uh, started up my own thing around uh, cloud kitchen facilities, you know, constructing, developing cloud kitchens, infrastructure spaces, plug and play kind of a mechanism okay. where different food vendors, food brands can come in. And within no time, let's say an overnight kind of a timing, they can uh, start selling their food. All kind of licenses are ready, all kind of infra. Basically, software is a service. We replicated it in the cloud kitchen field. Okay. Plug and play kitchens, all the infra, all the licenses are ready. They just have to bring in their, you know, their equipments and start selling. Okay. So alongside, uh, then I was uh, always keen on kind of... Uh, training, facilitation, as well as coaching. So I started few certifications. I did uh, my ICF PCC. In fact, I met Momita in that batch only. Mm -hmm. And uh, then alongside, I did a course, uh, one year course uh, in IM Ahmedabad. About, uh, the course was about senior management. It, it was a one year blended course where we have to spend some time on the campus and otherwise these are offline classes. Okay. Uh, and now I am... Uh, I am planning to kind of take this training and coaching thing more seriously and uh, looking to, you know, build my own website brand, so on and so forth. So that just trying to test the waters, like uh, how much uh, lucrative this is as a field 
and mm-hmm. i'm talking about you know mo- money wise uh, of course it's a noble profession you get to interact with people all that is fine but my one of my primary aims is to see that how much it uh, you know what is it in their in this profession from a monetary standpoint perfect perfect so this is my journey in nutshell so far super thank you so much sakar and a warm welcome to you thank you thank you okay who would like to go next uh yes sir send you sir i would like to go next now yes sir uh, first uh, i will talk about myself and then i will put forth my thoughts about the image sure. uh i i think i am odd man out in this forum because i have zero experience from training teaching learning and development on that front uh in 2010 i completed my uh, mba in the international business and after that uh, for 8 9 years i was in Volkswagen VW India after that for 3 years i was with John Deere and uh, since one and a half year i am working with uh, uh, Fiat India so all my previous and current organizations are car manufacturer and uh, i am working in supply chain management since then so i have a, i mean i don't have any experience with the tra- uh, uh, trainings and teachings but my as and when i am are getting ahead in my professional career there i have realized that if a person has to succeed in the managerial roles or a, a higher management if i have to uh, go grow then i have to have such skills that i will be able to communicate with people uh, in a better manner which i didn't have right now that is my one of the uh, i mean uh, objective to join this course and class and after that uh, i have also have to learn the the platform skills and public speaking skills mm. so these are two three uh, areas where i have to grow uh, right uh, okay so now i will talk about the image i definitely won't be able to match the way uh, my predecessor spoke but i will put forth my thoughts whatever i am feeling now uh, sure. i will talk about the left hand side uh, top image uh, the helping hand which is shown there Uh, what i have perceived from this image is that everyone is facing challenges or problems in their life but mm-hmm. if someone is giving some helping hand uh, to that person uh, while solving that problem then it becomes uh, beneficial for that person because nobody has uh, uh, all the knowledge in the world and while growing up that person has to take some inputs or some uh, wisdom from other person who has already done that mm-hmm. so in those situations it is better to uh get help from somebody who has already done that and when the hand changes uh the when i i mean when i will become experienced person in those cases i will help the other people who are in need wonderful wonderful abhijit and um, so that's that's exactly what you're already doing and you will grow to do that that's exactly its facilitation so you have picked up the image okay. which says that the support hand uh, is an experienced hand and like you said it is supporting others so a role of a facilitator is doing that and this workshop is going to help you with some tools not knowledge but some tools of how to be their hand which is going to support so and uh, you said that you are not into a profession of teaching and training however as leaders as you grow and like you rightly said it may not be only about public speaking but we are all facilitating in every walk of our life we are facilitating at home we are facilitating in a team meeting we are facilitating uh, with our colleagues on the road sometimes and in a in a agm in a in a society meeting also we are facilitating so this session is just going to give you tools and how to apply where to apply is a choice we all have yeah very very warm welcome right. abhijit thank you so much for sharing your thoughts thank you so much so hello thanks okay raj and sunny yeah hi sanjeev good morning hi, good afternoon good to see you all together so i think we already know each other so yes 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 so let me introduce myself maybe so abhijit raj sakar i am so i am sunny agarwal i am working in skoda volkswagen in chakan plant so i am a qualified chartered accountant i am in accounting team and i am responsible for reporting uh, global and local reporting so this is my broad role uh, i am leading a team of eight and i mean three qualified chartered accountants so so sanjeev I, i will also pick the same image which abhijit talked about the first image i think see he rightly mentioned so if you see the hand it's like a support so basically 
it can be personal like in in your personal life also in your professional life also if you observe any problem and if you go as a volunteer and act and give support to other other team member or your family member that image depicts that you are a support function like you help helping the organization as a facilitator and helping all the colleagues as a support to help the their problem their challenges so that image which like what i perceive from that image it's like a support function so so whenever we see any team member is facing any problem so we act as a support system so i think that, that is one of the quality of leader uh, like every leader should see like our our problem also and others problem also and act as a support system wonderful wonderful thank you so much sunny thank you and a very warm welcome thank you okay raj yes so good good afternoon all of you sakar sunny and ichit so i born and brought up in mumbai so i am working in the isb double icon and from the technical support part so handling the dealer network for all technical their concerns so currently based in town zone bangalore so having having automotive experience of 20 years in automotive after sales department where i have been in the technical part so i will take the image number 6 so it's tell generally is like a key is we are stuck or we are growing so we have to take with other people also with together because generally the business targets and everything is there are lacking so without one or two person we cannot pull that business target so everyone hands is jointly is required to support the organization for the growth of the organization so if i am growing so i have to pull my other people also for growth that's it i can tell about the image number 6 great thank you so much raj thank you and a warm welcome to you as well so thank you so much everyone for sharing your thoughts and why did we do this activity um let me give you the perspective of that this activity is like a visual image of a what a problem looks like for a business leader so imagine that we have that uh, somebody sharing this uh, a story so as an lnd professional or as somebody who is going to craft a learning path so we started the title of the session is we are talking about creating moving from problems to progress crafting effective learning paths so what is our role or how can we do that is what the webinar is all about yeah so imagine that this is what you get as a data point from your stakeholder it may be a team member it may be a business leader and you as an lnd person or you are as a solution provider let me not use the term lnd professional as a solution provider how do you create that path is what we are going to get into so i will now hand it over to momita to take us uh, further thank you sanjeev and uh, i guess we have started on the right path the uh, facilitation i think i'll use that word is all about perspective building and every picture here or every thing that you all said the way you looked at it is facilitation so the way and that is where one of the biggest challenge i would say and also an opportunity to sit across and listen and understand and sell and then perhaps make sense and that's what we all did in the last four five or maybe you know 10 minutes 15 minutes when sanjeev just showed us those pictures and we were like oh god what are these we were not prepared we were told you know it's a webinar and we are going to learn something but we started thinking and that is what we are trying to talk about today and i mentioned to you guys when i started the introduction that it's been 25 years so i was on the other side as a training manager as a lnd head where facilitators is to just come in and you know and has to talk okay this is the business and my business you know this unit is facing a lot of attrition we really want you guys to come up with something and the solutions that were provided i'm not saying they were wrong but it was done in a haste and today what i liked about this group is you all did not come in in haste you all took your own time and you all presented it i think the first things first is am i actually listening to what is being told to me so you be a leader you be in a technical department and i love the word that sanjeev views stakeholders so to right now i'm speaking to you the least i can do is listen 
And this is something that we miss when we hear a problem, when we hear a challenge. You know, immediately the experience, you know, the knowledge that we have brings us, oh, this, I know what to do. And most of the time we are not right there because we are seeing it from our perspective and not from the business perspective. So how we want to go ahead in this session now is I'm going to put in a live situation right now. And perhaps we'll run a role play here. Uh, Sanjeev has willingly, uh, you know, play uh, accepted without any option here to be the business guy for a change. He's always been on the other side. Then today he will be the business guy. And this is the problem that he shares with all of us here. You can read it. Sanjeev. Of course, he is on mute, so I will talk on his behalf at this point, and he'll maybe start talking once we started. He says, my employees are not motivated enough. I see a declining employee morale. Can you conduct a motivation training program for my team? And these are some things, you know, they already have a solution in mind, and perhaps the first two sentences are this. So even before we get into our own acting skills uh, between Sanjeev and me. What is your take? The Abhijit, Sakar, Raj and Sunny, what is your take? If you hear someone saying something like this, what will you do after that? I mean, see, it's not that easy a problem to solve because dipping morale or motiv motivation, it's not like, you know, we we'll, uh, run a magic wand and the team will be on the other side. So I think uh, if I have, if this problem is presented to me, I'll have a, a a deep discussion with that particular guy. That what are the what are the reasons that he sees why the morale is dipping, you know, and kind of go on and uh, in a manner and ask him questions so that I get the real insight, at least what is running in his in his headspace and what is actually transpiring on the ground. Like when was the morale high? Because there is a dip in the morale, so at some stage there, it might have been high also, right? So what has changed since then? And so on and so forth, so that I get few data points where then I can, you know, kind of go back and present to him or come back with a more concrete solution. So it's just you asked and randomly this thought came to me. So, yeah. Perfect, Sakar. Thanks for, so much for sharing. And it's a great start to ask questions, deep dive, try to understand the scenario. Yes, very good. Anybody else? Is there any other way? So first, uh, uh, yes, I will try to understand. Please go ahead. Raj, go ahead. Yeah, thanks, Vijay. So first, I have to understand ki whether the morale is down, what it means. It, because for people to people, it will be different morals. So for me, like a salary will be there, some other people for other things will be there. So in the moral high, what was the good thing was happening? And the, when the I feel as a businessman, the morale is down. That's why I'm losing the business. So it cannot be related to morale also. So first, I have to discuss with the people to understand ki what are the challenges and why the business is going down. Business can go down in any other aspects also, not about the morale only. So to motivate the team, they need to understand ki what is their requirement, whether we can fulfill or whether we cannot fulfill their requirements. So the things is need to get a analyze first, then for corrective action, we can check and we can do whatever the things to do to bring their morale back to the first baseline. That's it. I can talk now. So you're bringing in diverse views and a holistic approach to it. Just not going in that because of the morale in the business, you're also looking at maybe there are multiple other areas. Very good, Raj. Thank you so much for sharing. Yes, Abhiji. Uh, yes, I will try to get some historical data or a trend uh, where if a similar problem was there a few years ago or a few months ago in the similar uh, company and if any measures were taken at that time, uh, then uh, I will study that. If uh, I mean some measures if taken, why they didn't work at that time and if we have to take some new approach this time so that uh, taking some learnings from the past, I will use that uh, wisdom uh, for a future implementation. So I think, I don't know, Sanjeev, if we need to do the role play now, because I guess this is one area that, you know, has always been a challenge that when we listen or when we hear a problem statement, and I love the approach that you guys have taken, is that you have not assumed or you have not concluded. 
I think it's it's very human for us to perceive something and immediately get into the solution mode that oh this is this also had happened so I can do this I know this I have done in last organizations this and it has worked for me and the uh, I think the challenge here is to figure out the difference that it has worked for me does not mean it works for everyone else yeah and this is one uh, you know conversation that I had and re very recently I had with one L and D head and. Uh, she is a GM of her uh, organization and she runs the uh, learning and development. And she says, Momita, you know, it's been a while since we have come across facilitators who just are calm, quiet. They listen to us and they try to understand what we want. I have come across facilitators and trainers who are more of the sellers, you know. Yeah, hello. You know, I can do very good in this. So the moment the business says motivation, oh, I have trained so many organizations, I've motivated and I, in fact, last month I got a need that my, and it was a very similar one, which I had actually finally had to say no to it. 15,000 employees on contract, they are leaving our organization. Can you do a two hour virtual motivation training for them? And I actually had to turn that to a, quite a good amount of money. Huh? Sakar, you were mentioning how lucrative it is and a <laughs> amount of money, but I was not sure if I could do it. Two hours virtual program, they have already decided what they want. And in that, they wanted me to also talk about their rules and policies a little bit. And their intention is motivation. Their result is attrition. I didn't know what to do. And so as people or as experts, I would call ourselves experts because we are a little, you know, other side and they have given us this opportunity to understand the problem. Can we listen? So Sanjeev, if you don't mind, can you just share the slide with uh, uh, sure. for the questions, if you can show them. Something that we had prepared, I'm just looking at the time and just cutting off, we'll do the breakout room activity. Sure. Yeah. And maybe open it up for any more questions you'll have. Yes, so and this is what I was actually trying to hint and this is where we are saying, you know, first listen and I, you guys are doing an amazing job and that's why perhaps you all are spending your Sunday afternoon with us. The intent is very high. Of course, the second one, which all you guys have put in, uh, since you the earlier one. Yeah, thank you. Deep dive and some of it you all have touched, Raj touched and Sakar as well as, of course, Abhijit. How can I deep dive? We are not only deep diving on motivation, we are deep diving on Employees, are these the employees? Do you have, what about the other employees working with? What about other departments? You know, kind of, we are not only looking at this, the moment you say, which employee? So he says, I see a declining employee morale. Which employee is this manager talking about? Is it one, two? Is it the entire department? And what is it that is telling him that there is a decline? And that's what you all mentioned. The job that they do, do we understand? Maybe the job itself can be somewhere where it's daily the same thing. It doesn't bring in. So can I understand as an expert on the other side, what are they doing? Third, which is, I, I think the uh, Raj put in, what is the other areas, the cultural engagement of the organization? Where is the organization? In? How are they going ahead? And finally, what is the future plans for them? Are they also looking at some development plans? What is their career graph? So Sanjeev, if you can show back the next, uh, uh, the questions that we had prepared for a role play, Sanjeev was all set to act. These were some questions that we both brought in. In fact, if we are on the other side, this is something that perhaps we can ask the business. I'm just keeping quiet to have a look on it. And if you have any questions for us at this moment, I'll be happy to take it. Yeah. Any questions for me yeah. at this point? So, Mamita, I would like to share a uh, perspective. Sure. 
So when you are looking at these questions, and this is this is we are going to deep dive in this when we are going to do the um, CIFT workshop, the journey for all of us. Uh, many times we get into solving the problem versus coming up a, with a learning path. These are a little different in the way our profession or our it's expected from us. And Sakar can connect to this that as a coach, I'm not giving you a solution. I'm creating a path for you to learn. So in the same scenario, is it a skill building? Is it a forum where people come and just vent out, fight out, call out what is required? Is it sometimes a training program may not work? It may just be a workshop where people come and I'm just facilitating. I'm not giving any gyan. I'm not giving any skill development. So it is a complete uh, battery of things which we can do from this one need. And that's what we are going to do. Go, we are going deeper or rather giving you a little flavor of that from this webinar. So when you ask this, and this is not only the uh, questions which we will talk about, but this talks a lot. These are, uh, you cannot script it. But we, I hope you all understand or get a flavor of the philosophy behind. We will run yeah. you through something uh, as we go ahead. These questions are going to give me a opportunity to know the requirement a little more better. And again, I repeat what I said. There is a solution-oriented approach and a learning path approach. So these are subtly different in the way we design something. Thanks, Mamita. I guess Sanjeev touched upon a very uh, good word like design uh, and that is something that I would like to take a moment here and perhaps run into the next one is 1243. Uh, most of this uh, and especially when I started my train, training journey or to become a trainer, uh, the one thing that I, of course, delivering is a part of it, which Abhijit was also mentioning, you know, platform skills in terms of standing, talking, articulating. But even before that, if I understand why am I doing what I'm doing, perhaps it becomes much more easier. So in this conversation, why am I meeting the client? Am I meeting the client to get a program, get a business, get money? Of course, those are long-term plans. But in this moment, am I going to get the money? Maybe not. But how will I get it if I understand and if I listen? And these are few things that somehow, you know, creates that difference that our our program, we are trying to look at those nuances where we can create that little extra bit. You know, if you just sit down and listen, at times when the business guys, you would have also come across your stakeholders when they have a problem and they have spoken to you, you may not even have uttered a word, they have felt better. So always can I look at what am I, why am I here for? What is my purpose? And as facilitators, as trainers, as leaders, it becomes very critical to understand that. And these are some nuances that we are going to go deep dive in our program. So we have some time now. So uh, Sanjeev, should we just go ahead and give them one little, yeah. So let's look at another challenge and see your response to it. So the challenge as you see on the slide, resistance to change and ineffective team collaboration. So that is what the business is telling us, uh, the stakeholders telling us that people just are resisting any change that I bring about. And I don't see team collaboration. Of course, you all are a very small group. I don't know if you want to create a breakout room, Sanjeev, what is the plan? Uh, do you want to do that or? We can have a plenary discussion. We can have a discussion okay, here is what I think. Yeah, we are just four people in the room. So that's okay. Yeah, so, I can, yeah, maybe I can play the role of the business now. Yeah. And uh, you all can ask me questions to understand this or come up with a learning path for this challenge. Take a moment and you all can, I'm ready for your questions. So we have to play the facilitator's part and you are representing the business side, right? Perfect. <clears throat> okay.
So, Bhomita, I yeah. understand the concern that you've uh, put out here. So, I just really want to know from you that what do you really mean by this resistance to change and then effective team collaboration? Or let's break it into two parts. Just uh, give me share more details about what do you, what does this resistance to ch change really mean in the context of your team and your organization? Uh, what has happened is of late I've seen if I come up with any new idea in the team, we have morning meetings every day. And uh, if there is a new idea or if there is a new work or, you know, something that initiative that I want them to say or pick it up, they just don't respond. They don't, they say, no, Mamata, we have so much of work and I don't think it, I have the bandwidth to do it. And these are some, every day there is some, you know, excuse just not to pick that up. And that's when I feel they are just not open to change. Okay. So are these uh, the tasks that you mentioned, are these new additional tasks that you are expecting out of them or are the these are the regular day-to-day -day jobs that just you reiterate them and then they are not doing it? So regular jobs, uh, it's only a value add, you know. At the end of the day, we have to show productivity. We have to, you know, create something more. Uh, you could just can't keep doing what you've been doing. So even a value add or even looking at a process change or maybe you know one step more, I don't get the response. Okay. And uh, this you not getting the response since, since how long you are <clears throat> observing this symptom from your team and teammates? I think over the last three months, so... Um, I have been seeing and uh, that's why I, in fact I called you and you know I wanted to have something for them so that sure. you can know, see them open up for all these activities. Sure. May I know your team size like what can, what what are the numbers that we are talking here like is is it every team member behaving the same couple of them like what are the the entire my direct reports are 15 and uh, yeah. here if they I see their teammates also the total team is around 40. Uh, but I don't see any initiative coming up from anyone. So you're saying the whole group is kind of displaying? Kind of, yeah. What as per you has changed in last three months, Momita, then? Because you said three months is the timeline. So maybe, uh, you know, th uh, three months when we say, yeah, there, there are questions around what else can we do as a team? How else can we showcase our, uh, you know, our results, our of something new in the team, some value add, because today it is all about competition. Other departments are doing so well. So I'm getting very worried that our team is just doing what they are asked to. I don't see any initiative. I understand that. But what was that trigger point? What was that event which kind of triggered this where you need to now start showing things differently? Like something would have transpired, right? Or it was all of a sudden it came to your mind and then there, there might have been some trigger. So we have this uh, boardroom meetings where all departmental heads go and you know they share what they have been doing. And one of that, uh, my boss uh, said, uh, Mamita, I don't see any uh, thing major happening in your department. I don't see them coming forward. I so I don't see them you know taking any initiative or participating in other functions, the CFTs kind of activities. What's happening? Where are you and your team? Okay, so so am I hearing that? Even before three months, these symptoms were being shown, but not that much evident or not being observed by others. And in the three, in last three months, since now you are also trying to improve, they are getting more, you know, visible. Um, is my understanding correct, or is there a gap? Yeah, maybe from that meeting, I've started observing observing them a lot more, and maybe you know, I've also started pushing them a little bit. So yes, you are right. I'll stop you here, Takar, one minute. Uh, I love this conversation that's happening. What about Abhijit, uh, Raj, uh, Sunny? Any questions that's coming in your end or any observations for what Sakar is doing with me at this moment? Yeah, basically, just uh, trying to get uh, to know the trigger, why that has happened. And basis that maybe he will uh, find out like how he can solve this. Maybe he will start interacting one-to-one -one with each team member and then as a group. To, to find out how he can solve this problem. Uh, like as a learning path, as mentioned by Sanjeev, maybe why they are demotivated? What is the reason? Like what has changed and why this is happening? And then basis that uh, he will like decide how he can help 
his team members and to find out the solution. And if something is it's not in his control, like maybe the problem is bigger, maybe some it depends on it's an organization problem, then 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 maybe it solution I don't know how to find a solution, but sometimes problem is different, like like it's not within our control. So we have to see first what is the trigger, how we can solve it. It's under our control or it's uh, like it's a uh, it's it's common for other area also. That is the point, I think. Very nice observation. Sakar, amazing question. So you see how it's going. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. What I feel is, uh, I think we have to understand and find out the incident, what has acted as a la last straw that has broken the camel's back. Uh, because a lot of things must have happened uh, well before that. And we have to check what actually went and what forced people to become the passive aggressive and why they are not cooperating. Dive through and what has happened or what has triggered. Yeah, Raj, you are also adding something, I guess. Yeah, yes, right. Uh, yeah, Monta. So, just uh, as you mentioned that you, you have started noticing last, uh, last three months that the team is giving a resistance. So, as a team of 40 people, the 40 people cannot give a resistance at a single time. Right? So, there will be a selected people only where the resistance is coming. Uh, What type of resistance is coming for particular the workload or any other issues which uh, because for different people different resistance will be there so for, we need to sit with them and talk with them and understand him why they this resistance is coming from their side so that we can short out by the discussion with them or may the workload of myself only is, has been changed because of pressure from the top management so this making also they are having a resistance also so first, me also have to think whether I am putting a loss of pressure on them because of that, why they are giving a resistance to me. That can be also part of that. So that can avoid it. One more point, um, I think, so as a leader, I think we should also analyze ourselves also about whether we have done something. It is this, this creating problem. It's not only because of the team member. So like I have seen many of the leaders, they don't interact. So that also creates this issue. So sometimes we a, we are the problem actually. As a as a person who is asking this question, sometimes can I ask a question which will help them identify the problem actually aapke leadership may hai. They are no is getting down because of the way you are. But as an LND profession, sometimes that's a very um, challenging uh, uh, decision to make because uh, okay, how can I do that and how can I help him understand that? So that's that's one of the questions which can be a million dollar question that uh, not directly asking ki problem aap mein hai ya team mein hai, but trying to find out whether he's able to reflect and get them together into a design where they are able to share their thoughts between each other. Super. Right. Mamita, I'm enjoying this conversation. It's really interesting. <laughs> I talk, Sakar, very rudely, Sakar. Wait, let me hear. <laughs> he has pushed me to no, no. that, that problem very <laughs> 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 No, no. I was I was about to say that now this is the last question because even I was running out of the questions. <laughs> we what to what should be a follow up question? But you did my the job. You made my job easy and kind of I was running out of the questions. And it's amazing. I, I guess the way Sakar you did introduce yourself right. We know each other as coaches. For coaches, the questioning comes in very easily in terms of we are trained to look at understanding the situation, not assuming, not concluding. And I love the question flow that you were, because as experts on the other side, when somebody has called you with a problem, I think the expectation is, can we try to understand the problem, provide perspectives? And uh, of course, now it's like, I'll patent it for Sanjeev, that we are not solving problems here. We are trying to create a path ahead. And the path could be anything. It could be a team training. It could be just a group meeting. It could be one of the members going through something. It could be a leadership intervention. It may not be any, you know, kind of, if you actually play the role of an expert rather than give me two days, I will get your, you know, people to open up and pick up all initiatives because it's not about initiative taken. Yeah. Yes, Sakar, you want to say something? Oh, no, I think it got... Ah, okay. yeah. yeah, 
So, so this is just a very small glimpse of what we are going to do in our program. And this is one of the major challenges where we face. And I kind of, you know, uh, try to close this entire this discussion can go on as and you say I am just loving it. I'm all of a sudden feeling that we should have just started with this rather than what we started with. I'd like to take a moment and close this discussion. And the last slide, Sanjeev, if you can show it. Uh, I will, you can just put all the four boxes. Uh, sometimes animation is, uh, this is something as facilitators, you know, we have to find out, do we like animation? Do we not like animation? I'm looking, throwing up two parts of any intervention. I mentioned it may not always be a classroom program. When we are designing the intervention, and this is where we are today, we are, we are just trying to understand what is the challenge and can I create? I need to understand what is the result the business is looking at. So I start with the results, meaning if I do a two-day, three-day, one month, whatever the learning path gets created at the end of the day, what is it that the business guy wants to have? Is it that everyone wears a hat of an initiative and everyone takes initiative, you know? Is it, or is it that people are more open to... Uh, diverse ideas, they sit down and brainstorm, they start adding value to every mundane or routine task. So I need to clarify, and in our language, if you want to connect it, the objective, the result that the business will. Second is the behavior. How will you measure it? Because that's always been a challenge. That program to Kalia was good, but after one month, we don't know where they are. So what is it that consistent behavioral change you want to do? Do you want them to ask more questions? Do you want them to be more attentive? Do you want to sit down? Whatever. Learning that if they invest so much of time, today you all invested one hour, one thing I'm sure you would have picked up. And if I have not been able to do it, then why am I doing it? And of course, the reaction that do they feel good after that? And this is what we go before when we are designing a training or an intervention. Evaluation happens on the other side. You know the feedback forms which none of us like, right? So that's a reaction. Then learning, some organizations go for it. Behavior, some people have that post-training method. And finally, they have presentations, projects. So if you have, if I have to show, I've created this chart for the business challenge that we put across, and that's there in the next slide. This is what it is. The challenge, and I like the way Sarkar said, let's focus on resistance to change. So. The results are the behavior, what you can see on your screen, learning and the reaction. So as an expert, am I looking at it holistically rather than just looking at it from the business perspective? If business is this, my business, that if I get a three-day program or if I get a six-day intervention or if I get a three months, I'm not even going there. I am still with the business trying to create something for them which gives them that value. So this is what we thought we could share when it comes to converting business challenges to learning path. Yeah, and uh, it's already won. Uh, we would like to take a few moments, but anything that you all have to share at this moment uh, before we just close with certain information that Sanjeev has to share. We can't see you, so we'll have to wait for you all to talk. Can I also request everyone to come on the video for a moment so that I would like to take a group picture? Sakar, Gauri, Sunny. Sunny? Okay, everybody. Oh, oh Sunny is. Okay. Oh, what happened to him? We're joining from one other. Uh, okay. okay, thank you so much for uh, being here. So, um, of course, you can, you all have our uh, contacts, you all know us, you can reach us for any, any information about the session. What I'm going to share with you is um, a link for the program registration. This is um, 
we are coming up with this offer which is going to be specifically for the day to day so people who have attended the webinar and would like to register so this is the link and you just have to if you want to join the CIFT program it is at a very very um, I would say special price of 85,000 which is going to be valid only for till the end of today if you are not able to take a decision of course you know the as a part of the brochure we have the other details of registration which talks about um, where am I where am I, where am I? yeah let me share that with you. Let me share my screen just a second. Yeah, I hope you are able to see my screen. So uh, we have an early bird savings uh, offer, which is till the 30th of September. So where you pay 95,000, you can also book your seat uh, with a very uh, minimum of 10,000, which can happen anytime. And then you pay it in two parts. And if you are like the a little late decider kind of a thing so then it will happen it will be 1 lakh 20000 um, if you register after the 11th of october so uh, that's the last chance which we have the program details you will be receiving on email um, uh, and a whatsapp so you all have the brochure it's a three module program so if i very very briefly talk about the program what we are going to get into we have three capsules which we have named it as the one the first one starting with your awareness the building the persona so if i connect to what momita said sometimes are we why are we getting into a conversation or why are we doing this workshop itself so that awareness is what we are going to build on in the first capsule it talks about the difference between training facilitation many other attributes of a good trainer practicing the skill so a lot of mock a lot of experience a lot of chances for you to experiment in the nine days of the session the second capsule is uh, titled as learn and practice enhance your proficiency so how do i design a content how do i design a virtual session how do i design something which is going to be in a very effective session and um the enhanced proficiency, like I, I in coaching, we say, you know, are you able to dance in the moment? So are you able to really flex your style? So um, there was one um, a very senior facilitator. He said, you create your session design the whole night. Next day morning, wake up, have a cup of coffee and tear the whole design and then get into the room. So are you able to be completely vulnerable as a facilitator? So there's a design in the back of my mind, but I don't carry that with me. That's something which is a great skill of a facilitator. The last one is about, uh, the last capsule is called as mastery, elevate performance. So how do I administrate a different tools which are required in a learning journey? Um, so we are going to give you a lot of skill practice and feedback from our side in this journey, not only in the session, but between me, Gauri and Momita, we are going to do coaching sessions also with you. That's a whole package you're getting into the CIFT. Uh, this is a certified by... Uh, internationally it is recognized by world certification institute so obviously it has a weightage that you are going to have an international exposure of what training and facilitation is all about um, i repeat you can feel free to reach out to any one of us um, about the program if you have any questions you would like to know more about what is happening and all that the dates are finalized um, again i repeat if you register today you get a special price of 85,000 or you can of course um, block your seat by uh, just filling the form and doing a payment of 10 grants. Yeah. So that's, that's about the program and what we have today. So I would surely want to thank each one of you before I finally hand it over to Momita. I thoroughly enjoyed the conversation and training and facilitation for me is conversation. So I'm sure you also enjoyed and it was a well um, invested uh, Sunday afternoon time for all of you. So once again, thank you so much. Have a great time and feel free to connect with us anytime. Momita, over to you. Any final comments to say bye-bye and uh, get going Sunday lunch? Yes, please. Abhijit, Raj, Sakar, Sunny, Gauri, your final words of being a silent participant. It's very difficult to be a trainer and sit silently, right, Gauri? So I think that's not easy. One of us chose just to be quiet today. So yes, please. Any final thoughts? Yes, Mamita. So I think it was a nice, nice session. So one learning I got from this session, 
as like as you if you read the uh, talk, like uh, program name na growth to learning so basically if like one point i got like if you are solving any problem like solving any problem so you don't have to uh, solve that immediately right if you create a learning path also then also you are solved so that is that was a, a good session and one more clarification this uh, cift is only for trainer right this <laughs> what is this program so, this is only for trainer no we can talk about it because this program has been designed in such a way that we are saying people who are aspiring to be a trainer a facilitator okay. uh, it's for them so possibly somebody who's just planning to like abhi okay. was sharing right he's interested so obviously people who are venturing or exploring for them too it is not that you need to understand what training is to enter this program definitely not okay okay Thank you. Yes. Uh, yes. I just wanted to ask uh, Nita, is there any prerequisite a person has to have uh, before joining this program? Because I was the least competent person in this forum today. So I am the from learning and uh, training and development point of view. So I am asking this. Yeah. I like the way you start your conversation. At least I'm not. I don't. You know. So Abhiji, that's first thing. That's not. So the prerequisite is you need to explore or intent. The intent is that you want to become a trainer or look at training or facilitation as a profession. That's one bit of it. Two, okay. join an organization and that is a role that you're looking at and you want to grow in that. Maybe join that l &D department and get into training and facilitation. That's another. The prerequisite that we okay. have is that you have your intent. To come learn and look at. So we are looking at the entire gamut of it. One is how we just saw okay. a paper today of understanding a business challenge. So looking at designing, understanding, designing, delivering, and facilitating. So we, if a fresh okay. graduate, for instance, I'm just thinking aloud with two three years of work experience, is venturing into a profession like this. This is the program to be. We will have free assessment, by the way, Abhijit. We are not going to just take whoever comes in. We have a free assessment process. We are going to conduct a personal interview and a behavioral event interview. So in terms of trying to deep dive in you as a personality, uh, not because we don't want okay. you to be, but we want to see the content is right for you. Because it's an open program uh, it's, and it's a public program. We are looking around... 18 to 20 participants in that batch when we are looking at that batch to make it a little you know so that it's value adding for everyone we are trying to pre-assess so if you find any candidate that this may become too much or we need some more we okay. may have a conversation with the person when they are registered but we have a pre-assessment okay. yeah okay thanks yeah thank you any quick uh, things from Raj and Sakar? Rujita, we have already taken a photo there. So thank you. They have already switched on their camera and we did a photo. Rujita is a dear digital marketing partner. So she is ensuring we do the right thing in the right way. Yes, please. Sakar and Raj. I think, Mamita, it was a great one hour spent. Like you, both of you made it really conversational, active listening. So, and there was a lot of receptivity from both of you and the kind of calmness you displayed. Otherwise, it's a lot of talking from one side, but not even a single moment was there when you not, when we were not engaged or involved in this whole thing. So I think I enjoyed it and that was my key takeaway also. Thank you. Thank you, Sagar. Thank you so much. Yes, Raj. Oh, thank you, all of you. So it was a very good interactive uh, so many learnings were there from the both the slides. If you think about the business challenges and about the resistance and even the first slide that about talks about the images. The images speak very well. Key. It's a different situation, different people, different things are there. So it was a good learning for me. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks again. And please, uh, we are there. Uh, you all can just connect with us. And any questions, we are happy to help. Gauri, the final word from you and we'll say bye-bye and let them go and enjoy their Sunday lunch. It's only gratitude to all of you there. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed the session. 
and looking forward. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys, and all the best. And take care. Thank you, all of you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.